when this is how people react to your cakes, you know you've done a good job. Hey everybody, it's April from the April Julian Cakes channel. I make mind melting cakes. If you're here because you wanna question your reality a little bit, you're in the right place. If you wanna learn how to make other people question their reality, you're also in the right place. So picture this, I embarked on an epic quest to try to baffle fellow YouTuber and cake artist, Lori of the Icing Artist. The challenge, create five hyper-realistic cakes so that she and her partner Kevin could have an epic battle royale of is it cake in their home. This video and the other four in the series, I'm going to be taking you behind the scenes of how I made each and every one of those five cakes. So if you haven't already watched and you want to guess along with Lori and Kevin and see how you fare, go ahead. I put the link down below. I'll wait right here. Do your little clickety click. One eternity later. Oh, hey, you're back. How'd you do? Was it tough? I know I'm good. So sit back, relax. I'm gonna pull back that curtain and reveal to you how I made one of those five cakes. So for each of the rounds, we had a theme. The round that we're gonna focus on today is the gardening theme. So for that, I went and basically raided my parents' backyard and found this distinguished gentleman who served as the inspiration for my cake. Now I'm gonna show you how I made them. Okay, so right off the bat, we are starting with a make it to fake it detail. These are the little details that I think are the secret sauce behind making your cake as realistic as possible. For this, basically I wanted to create the illusion that this was a strong wooden or ceramic structure that was kind of standing and defying gravity on its own. As you can see in the real gnome, there's some negative space between his legs and that toadstool. And I wanted to recreate that by creating a really interesting structure underneath the cake. On Is It Cake, we actually called this Tiltscape. So I'm going for top Tiltscape marks here with the structure of this gnome. So to get that Tiltscape effect, I basically took three short dowels and kind of glued them to my bottom cake board in this triangular structure. This kind of formed like a tripod that would support the top portion of the cake. As you can see, the legs and stem of this little dude are pretty skinny, not really worthwhile making in cake. So I just went ahead and used modeling chocolate and covered up that dowel and made a little mound for the grass. I used my favorite tools, my sugar shapers, and this little clay tool uh, made out of wood, I love this thing, to just kind of shape and form all the little details of the boots and the legs and the pants. For the grass, I just took my flat sugar shaper and made a little cross hatch over and over again, and that did a great job of making that texture. Now the key about this little step statue is that it's supposed to look like it's either ceramic or even more so that it's made out of wood and has been sort of whittled away with a carving knife. So when I'm using my shapers, I'm really trying to preserve those like flat beveled jagged edges to really give it the illusion that it's made out of wood. Before I start working on the upper portion of this gnome, I went ahead and started painting this bottom structure. The reason being once that cake is on there, it's going to be really hard to get into all those nooks and crannies with the paintbrush. These right here are my absolute favorite edible acrylics. They're by Karen Portaleo. They're called Portaleo Paints. I met Karen eons ago before there were any kind of YouTube tutorials tutorials, even before there was Instagram, and she taught me everything I know about structure, about creating whimsical cakes, about sculpting and painting cakes. I absolutely idolize her, so go ahead and check her out. I've linked to her below. This isn't an ad or anything. I don't even think she knows who I am, but these paints paint modeling chocolate so beautifully as you'll see here. I'm using her quick diluter. This is a formula that allows those paints to dry really, really fast so that you can very quickly go over them and make them darker and layer them over each other. Okay, now that the bottom half is finished, it is time to stack our cakes. For some added structure, I'm building all this cake onto a central dowel that runs kind of from the top of his head down to the bottom cake board. So it really pierces right through that middle cake board to the bottom of the cake. It's hidden in between his two little legs there so you don't see it. But I'm traveling quite a far away with this cake so the last thing I want is for his head to fall off mid-ride. <laughs> that would be an absolute disaster. So this structure is a pretty important part of this cake. So I take my classic vanilla butter cake, sandwich some white chocolate 
chalk a ganache between it and kind of create sort of a pyramid structure. This is a really, really rough shape, as you can see. Once that's set, I then carve it away and it really kind of just looks like, I don't know, like a spongy blob at this point, but trust the process, we're gonna get there. The real beauty of modeling chalk oak, the reason I love to use it as a cake decorator is that it behaves just like clay. So I can add pieces of it onto my cake and then just blend away the seams. So for the face, you'll see I added like two little balls of clay to make his cheekbones, a little sort of cone for his nose, and then I use my sugar shaper to blend away the seams so it just looks like one beautiful chubby little face. I even poke his nose a little bit with the sugar shapers to make the nostrils and it all just sort of starts to come together. It's amazing how just adding the facial hair really kind of transforms this thing. It's like gnome personality unlocked all of a sudden. For the hat, I just make a very simple cone shape, kind of twist it a little bit and give it a sort of a jaunty little tilt off to the side. And then again, I use my sugar shapers to add, you know, some creases and details to make it look like folded fabric. And that's pretty much it for the sculpture bit. Then it's on to the painting again, my favorite part. But here we go with make it to fake it. Tip number two, if you want to create dimension with your cakes, you can play with the dilution of your paints. So for the beard, I wanted to really make the creases kind of look like they're recessed and the other parts really look like they're sort of popping out. To do that, I diluted my black paint with again, that dilution solution, made it really, really thin like water so that it would get right into the creases of his beard. And then I simply took a clean paper towel and wiped away sort of the surface, leaving those sort of dark bits in the creases. It really added a lot of dimension, really helped sell this as sort of a sculptural piece. Now I'm going to add that pop of red to his hat and that bird bath. It looks beautiful against the blue of his coat and green of his pants. I'm going to leave the face for last because that's the hardest bit. We are nearing the end of this cake and I'm truly ecstatic. However, you can't tell because I am fully losing it by by this point, it is 4 a.m. My exhaustion level is off the charts. I start talking to this gnome like I'm giving him makeup tips, matching his foundation, and giving him cat eyeliner. I've really lost it at this point. But in the end, I think he turned out really great. What do you think? This is what he looked like next to all the decoys. Would you have made the same choices as Lori and Kevin did in their video? Let me know in the comments. And if you wanna learn more makeup tips for gnomes, please feel free to hit like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.